Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just finished having communion. I want to tell all the viewers out there, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Pastor Gregory Marilla, and this location here is called Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. And we're here to serve you, and we're here to give you a word from God. So I'm very excited that you have decided to see this video. And, well, I tell you, the best is yet to come for you. Why don't you bow your head, close your eyes, and let's go straight to the throne. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we come into this place called the sanctuary. This place is the place where we train in holiness. We train in being blameless. We train and be set apart for your glory. Father, right now I pray that this workout in the spirit will bring self-control into us, into our body, into our mind, into our spirit. Father, you told me that if the body and the mind and the spirit is not one, then I'm out of balance. So I pray that today in the name of Jesus, your hands will guide us and strengthen us and support us according to Exodus 32, 34. And all God's people here say, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, Hey, folks, this is our custom here at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center to give God a big applause. Come on, everybody, help me out. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're an exciting bunch. We love God. We love God. We're, we're happy to be in his presence. But now, what I need you to do out there is get your Bible, get your journal ready. Uh, the Lord has a new teaching for you. Praise the Lord. And this teaching is going to bless your heart. Praise God. In fact, today's date is 3, 3, 3, 13. So God is going to speak to you about your future. Praise the Lord. 3, 3, 13. Three significant numbers. Praise the Lord in the Bible. God is about numbers. Praise God. If you're a student of the Bible, you know that. God is about numbers. Praise God. Well, today's teaching, today's, this month's teaching the aim is, uh, if you write it on your paper or your journal, it's called position, position your mind to prosper. Position your mind to prosper. Praise the Lord. I want you to know something. I've been studying, I've been in his presence. And I've been studying other men of God that have uh, done this type of teaching before me. Everything that we teach has been taught to us. Anything that you're doing right now has been passed down to you. Either God himself passed it down to you, or he used a mentor, or he used your primary mentor, which is the Holy Spirit. And I want you to write down this bold statement that I'm about to give you, praise God. And I, and I tell you once again, Ron is going to change your life. I'm telling you, it's going to ignite something inside of you, and, and the business is going to start. The first thing that I would like you all to write down is this. Every life battle is in your mind. Every life battle, every fight that you've had in your life has started in your mind. And then it's been manifested, of course, in the natural. Every life battle is a mind battle. Is a mind battle. Praise God. That's why it's important for you to train your mind and allow God to take you through the process. Otherwise, you'll stay stuck right where you at. Oh, yeah, you will grow older, but you'll never mature. And see, God doesn't want you to grow old. God wants you to grow better and become better. Literally, you are like wine. The older the vintage, the better you get. 
Praise God. So if you grab the concept of this teaching, God is going to bless you. And another thing the Lord put in my heart, he says, when you are in the presence of a man of God that has spent time in the Lord, there's a lot of anointing coming out. It's gushing out, he says. That's why you have these videos that are recorded. You go on the website and you sit down and you study again what the man of God has said to you. It's actually the Holy Spirit speaking to you using the man of God. So what you need to do is write what he gives you and don't try to write everything. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, you'll be in a place of confusion. And God is not a God of confusion. Getting back to the title, um, Position Your Mind to Prosper, is a title that God gave me. He says, when you position yourself, then you will prosper when you position yourself. Now, there are tools that you need to position yourself. I myself am going through a different process that, I've been, that I was going through last year. This is a whole different ballpark now. But I see the vision. I can see the vision clear now. Praise God. So what he wants for you in your life is for you to be able to see the vision that he put in your life. Somebody say amen. God has given you a vision. And once you discover that vision, praise God. See, you have to discover the vision. Praise the Lord. And then you can develop the vision. Praise God, okay? But we'll get into that later on in the teaching. So, if, if you win in your mind, you will win in your life. All right? Very, very, very simple, uh, true factors uh, it, and if you like, you can write it down. I'm going to try to go as slow as possible so that I can articulate what the Holy Spirit has been teaching me to give to you and give to myself. Remember, every time I point at you with the word, three times it comes back to me. So if you're a smart preacher, you watch what you're pointing. You watch what you're saying and you watch what you're doing. Praise God. So if you win in your mind, you will win in your life. And it doesn't matter in what position in life you are, whether you're a weightlifter for the Olympics. You can be a weightlifter, professional weightlifter. You can be a boxer, a professional boxer. Or you, or you can just have become a martial artist expert. It all takes place in your mind. Write this down, please. It is all in my mind. Everything starts in my mind. Praise the Lord. Everything. Everything. The thought that you had this morning started where? In your mind. In fact, your thoughts are seed your thoughts are seeds and those seeds will determine your feeling I'll write it again I'll say it again I'm telling you try, try to, try to uh, write what you can and if you can't write it because it's, you know, it's okay then you go into this recording again and listen to what the Lord is saying your thoughts my thought is a seed. And when I think these thoughts, they fall into a ground. Every seed has to fall into a ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the ground that my thoughts, my seed thoughts fall into is called the heart. Yes, sir. Come on now. My thinking goes into my heart. And when my thinking goes into my heart, it produces a harvest. And then I start living what I'm thinking. I start living what I'm thinking. I live what I think. I live what I think. So if I change the way I think, I'll change the way I live. 
And we have to go through the process. We have to go through the process. So what is the pastor trying to say to you? When you manage your mind, you'll manage your life. When you manage your mind, you'll manage your life. Come on now, praise the Lord. If you don't manage your thinking, you'll be like a city without wall. Anything will go inside of you. That's what the Bible says. So you have to control your thinking. You know when your thinking is coming from God, Reverend Virgilio, and you know when it's not. You don't, you don't have to say, is it or is it not? Because the Lord, when he speaks to you, he's going to speak to you his word. I like what Jesus did to him in Matthew chapter 4. At the, at the end of the, uh, of the conversation with Lucifer, he said, now, now that's enough. This is my version. He said, now that's enough. You are talking to the word. I am the word. So don't tell me, don't quote me and try to fool me with me because I know who I am. And this is my version. And, and Jesus turned around and told the devil, I know the you in you and I know the you in me. What you see is what you get and what you see is what the Father sent. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Praise the Lord. I come from the Father. When you see me, you see the Father. It's like when I see brother, uh, brother Ron's son, Tyler, I, 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 see, I, I see Ron. He can't say, that's not my son. It's just like when I see, yes, sir. Just, uh, just like when I see uh, Daddy Don, I see Mark. Mark can't say, Mark can't say, that ain't my father. And Daddy Don can't say, that's not my son. Now, Daddy Don has told me, I'm better looking than my son. <laughs> I've heard him say that to me. I'm better looking than my son. Remember, I'm the father. Praise the Lord. Amen. But this is the situation here. When you can manage your mind, you'll manage your life. Praise the Lord. You could be a weightlifter. You could be a boxer. You could be an expert in karate. You could be a doctor. Whatever you are is going to need the focus of your mind. Focus of your mind. Now, I have to give you a scripture. I want us to go to Philippians 2, 5. Some of you can quote it, but we don't want to quote it this morning. We want to read it so we can dissect it. Praise God. We want to hear what the word of God has to say to us. Thank you, Jesus. Always go into the word and let the word speak to you. I tell you, no matter how much you know that scripture, that verse, every time you'll read it, every time, it will speak to you differently. Because the word of God never goes stale. That bread of life never goes stale. That bread of life never goes dormant. Praise God. It is the power of God. It is the glory of God. So somebody say, thank God for the word. That was so weak, it's sad. Thank God for the word. Praise God. Thank God for the word. Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you need to get that. You don't live by your, the bread. That you're eating. You live by the word of God. Come on prophet. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in Philippians 2.5. Simply states like this. I'm going to read it in a King James version. And it reads like this. Everyone is there. Give me an amen. amen. The word of God in Philippians 2.5 reads like this. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. If you notice, 
The word is not written, at the ending of that, that statement is not read like this, Jesus Christ, it is read Christ Jesus. Right. Whenever you see the word Christ before Jesus, it's talking about God's anointing. So we're talking about the Messiah, the anointed one. Praise the Lord. So he's saying here, this is, this is your power. This is your anointing. This is your anointing. I'm talking to you. This is, your, this is how you need to work this thing. This is how you need to work this matter. This is how you need to do it. You need to say, how will Christ Jesus handle this matter? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right now, I feel the Spirit of God uprooting some stuff in your life. And if you don't submit to this, you'll stay where you at. You'll grow old, but you'll never mature. Have you ever seen an old fool? I've seen plenty of old fools in my life. Well, God is not interested for you to be an old fool. God says the mature you get, the better you should be. You should be like wine. The older the vintage, the better. That's why wine drinkers pay good money for a good vintage. Because they know they're not going to be drinking poo-poo. You heard me. Poo-poo. Praise the Lord. They're drinking good stuff that has been fermented. You hear the word? Fermented. So God wants to ferment you. Father God wants to ferment you in the word. He has a big cup in heaven. This is my version. And you're in that cup, and, he's st- and it's called the cup of blessing. And he's stirring up your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Those that have an eye to see, let them see what the Lord is saying. Those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Lord is saying. Those that can tell what the Lord is saying, let them tell someone else that you're in the cup of blessing. Praise the Lord. And you're being stirred up right now. So in the New Living Translation, it reads like this. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. So, when you have a bad attitude, that means that you have a bad way of thinking. You have a bad mindset. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Praise the Lord. Be careful with your attitude. Your attitude, write this down, exposes the way you're thinking. Your attitude exposes your behavior. Mm. So this morning, the Spirit of God wants you to make an adjustment in your attitude. Actually, he wants to uh, give you uh, an alignment, he says. He wants to uh, give you an alignment. He wants to uh, uh, line you up with the Word of God, praise God, so that you can position your mind to prosper, praise God. Every one of us here need to make a reality check on the way we've been thinking. Is my thinking been stinking? Is my attitude been good? Because your attitude is also a seed. Write this down, please. This is powerful what the Lord's telling me right now. I can't help myself. Watch the video again. Where you want to go? To a place to give you a little sermonette? Little sermonette. Samson and Delilah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ooh, I wish I had a witness in this place. That's why you sow seed in the ministry, to get yourself something right. Praise God. If a man don't work, he won't eat. Praise God. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be, I'm going back to what I was telling you to write down, don't worry. It says Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You're mocking yourself. You're fooling yourself. If you think the seed that you're sowing is not going to come back to you. I remember in New York, we used to say, man, what goes around comes around. Praise God. Don't be deceived. Your attitude is a seed. And your attitude, when it's sown correctly, it will reap a proper harvest. You can turn somebody off with your attitude. Mm. 
Your attitude can be so stinky and smelly that you don't even know that you stink. I'm telling you. So you have to, you have to check your attitude. And how do you start checking your attitude? How, does, how can you begin checking your attitude? You, you, you're going to have to take a check in the way you've been thinking, and you're going to have to start saying, how have I been managing my mind? What have I been feeding myself with? If you feed yourself every day with fast food, guess what? You're going to get fat. But not a healthy fat, an unhealthy fat. So you have to be careful what you're feeding yourself. Be careful that you're not a magnet that pick up other people's attitude. I'm talking to you right now in the name of Jesus. You know, it's funny, this morning I was, um, uh, when we had the, the healing school, uh, this morning I was sitting in the back, and I had a son and a daughter of mine in front of me, and, and I saw my daughter in the spirit almost speak like her mother-in-law. Now she may say, what in the world is he talking about? This is what I saw in the spirit. Why? Because that's your mother-in-law. If you're going to imitate a mother, why not imitate the one God gave you? Praise God. Okay? And then a lot of time I see my spiritual son and I see him imitate his natural father. And that's just a good thing that I know your dad now because I know where you're coming from, son. It's called relationship. Praise the Lord. So you have to know where you're at to be able to know where you're going. Oh, I ain't getting no help in here. You got to know where you're at. So before you can go where you're going. So you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. I want you to check your attitude. Because when you say, oh, I don't care, then that's what you're going to get. A harvest of I don't care. You need to face your problems. Because no one's going to face them for you. Don't talk about something you're tolerating. You're tolerating the thing, and you want to tell everybody about what you're tolerating. You look like a fool. Sometimes we got to uproot, Doc. We got to uproot before we can go into the Shekinah glory. God says, in this place, behind these curtains, I don't want blemish or wrinkle. I don't want spot. I want purity. So we need to purge our mind before it can get renewed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Give me three hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Now, in the amp, I love what the amp, amp, amplifier tells you. The amplifier just amplifies it. It makes it bigger. It says this. Let this same attitude and purpose, watch this, and humble mind be in you. Write these three words down. Attitude, purpose, humble mind. This is, this is what God desires for you. That you have a proper attitude. That you understand that you're not here by mistake. You're here for a purpose. And for you to please, no matter how big you get, stay humble in your own eyes. You don't have to tell people what you got or what you don't have. If you're going to tell people what you have, let them know that you have God in your heart. Praise God. And then it goes on saying, attitude, purpose, and humble. And then it goes on saying, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Now that word humility means strength under control. Because you're humble doesn't mean that you're a punk, that you're a chicken. It just means that I choose not to kick your butt today. If anybody has studied martial arts, the first thing they teach you is you must be a humble person. And the first thing they make you do is an oath that what we teach you, you don't use it on people. 
It's for a defense and it's for a health. Actually, first, they say it's for health. It's for health. It's for health. To get balance in your breathing, balance in your, in your body balance, and, and, and for you to get healthy. It's called moving meditation. It's all, you know, really what it is when you do martial arts, you're just worshiping God. I wish I had a witness in here. The angels did it. The warrior angels did it. They worshiped God with their body. David did it. When the ark came in the presence of David, David felt the presence of God so much that he just took off his clothes and started worshiping God and dancing in the nude. Praise God. And Saul's wife, I mean Saul's daughter was upset with David and she said, look at him. He's making a fool out of himself. And God says, because you spoke against my anointed one, you will never have a child. But all the servant women that were around and when they were looking at David dance, they were saying, Hercules, 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 praise God. David had it going on, praise God. David wasn't a minus, he was a plus. Praise the Lord. So God is calling us to be in a way uh, like David, humble in the presence of God. This is why we need to purge and renew the mind. Write this down. I must purge and renew my mind. The mind must be purged and renewed. Well, how do I start purging my mind? My mind needs a focus. My mind needs a focus. See, focus is a seed for expansion. Oh, Jesus, praise the Lord. Whatever you focus on will expand and become. Are you hearing me, George? Seed of focus. Focus is a seed of expansion. It expands. Whatever I focus on, I become. If I'm focused and I'm no good, then I'll become no good. I'll feel no good. My attitude will be wrong because my attitude is I am no good. Now, either you're no good or you're good. And if you're serving Christ Jesus and if God is your father and the Holy Spirit inside of you, that is a false statement. Are you listening to me? So your soul has a hold on you. So we're going to learn how to get out of the soul and get into the spirit. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. So it's important that you get a focus. Write that, write that down, please. I need a focus. And the focus that you need is something in the future. Whew. See, you need to start focusing in the future. See, some of us right now is having a hard time because we've been so stuck, stuck so much in the past that we don't know how to come out of the past. The past, you think is going to last. But the past is gone with. What you ate yesterday ain't going to do you no good today. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone when you work two weeks ago it's already gone because you already got the paycheck so you're waiting, you're waiting for a new little paycheck or a big paycheck but don't despise your small beginning because he says if you're faithful in the small things I'll put you in charge of big things you have to understand that when you're dealing with the small you really are going through the process you can never, ever go into the land of more than enough unless you get to the land of just enough. You got to get, you got to break even. That's what my mentor told me. You got to break even. If you don't know how to break even, how are you going to handle the, the multitude and the abundance that God has for you? Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Praise the Lord. Even if I preach to myself and the angels in heaven. Praise God. So you have to utilize what you got. Don't, don't speak against it. Speak to it. Grow it by speaking positive into it. 
Praise the Lord. So we all agree today that you need a focus, right? I need a focus. And you need to focus on something what? In the future. Stop focusing in the past. The past is in the tomb. It's been buried. It's dead. And what you got is today, and you're about to give birth. You don't know. Some of you are carrying for nine months already, and the water is about to break. Some of the ladies here know what I'm talking about. And as soon as that water breaks, you're going to give birth to this blessing. God wants to bless you, but he wants your mind right. Every, write this down again. Every life battle is in your mind. Every life battle is in your mind. The battle's in your mind. The battle is in your mind. The battle is in your mind. I remember a minister who wrote a song. His name was Richard Garcia, and he wrote a song called, There's a War Going On in My Mind. All the time, all the time, all the time. The war is in your mind. It's not your sister. It's not your brother. It's not your job. It is your mind. We need to give this mind to Christ and let him purge it and renew it. I decree under the sound of my voice that your mind today will be new for Jesus. He needs to paint. He needs to paint the walls of your mind. He needs to rearrange. He, oh, in fact, he says, I'm going to take the old furniture out and put new furniture in. I'm not dealing with the old no more, he says. 3, 3, 13 is not going to deal with the old no more. And if you're with me, say amen. amen. Don't tell me you don't like new things. Don't tell me you don't like new shoes. Don't tell me you don't like new pants. Don't tell me you don't like a new cologne. Don't tell me you don't like new. Don't tell me you don't like a new vehicle. Don't tell me you don't like new. Because if you don't like new, then you're a God of the past. You, you deal with the God of the past and not the God of new beginnings. He's the God of new beginning. He's the God of second chances. He's the God that put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like preaching. I feel like, can I preach it like I feel it? Praise God. Praise the Lord. He's about to stir your spirit. You need to get out of your funky rut. Praise God. Detour into the funk. And George Clinton is not here. Praise God. So cut it out. Must be the dog in me. Bow, wow, wow, yiggy, yo, yiggy, yay. Praise God. Oh, I've got something spirit on me now. Your mind needs a focus. If you don't have a focus, you will deteriorate. See, your mind has two parts. Your mind, your mind has a memory part and it has an imagination part. Write it down. Two parts. Two part mind. Your memory and your imagination. Your memory and your imagination. Now, now let me show you how deceiving this is. That's why you need to get a hold of it. Your memory is to replay the past. Your imagination is to replay the future. Some of you are afraid to live in a place called imagination. So you want to stay in a place called memory. Memory feels good. Memory replays the past. Memory keep replaying the past. Your imagination preplays the future. That's why God, when He speaks to us, He speaks to us through pictures. God gives us a picture of our tomorrow. God gives us a picture. I'm talking to you. The problem with you is that you've been going to your photo album, and the only thing you keep seeing is pictures of the past. Get ready to throw that photo album out and get a new one. Because God is going to do something new in you. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying forget your past. Your past, because of your past, because of your past, you're here today. The things that you've done in your past has brought you here today. But I'm, what I'm trying to say to you, don't live your today in the past. 
Write that down. I need to stop living my today in the past. I need to stop living my today in the past. Your today is today. And your tomorrow is your tomorrow. So if you keep living your today in the past, you'll never get to your tomorrow. Are you understanding what the Lord is saying to you? Okay, now. You can't keep thinking about yesterday. Love you so much, all the way. <laughs> so you can, you can. You have to think about today. Because today is now, right now. Right now. N O W. Now. Today is now. You have to, for your mind to be able to focus, you have to focus on your now. And I have news for you when you get to tomorrow, it's going to be called now again. So you never leave your now. Write it down, baby. Write it down. You never leave your now. You're always in your now. That's why the Japanese believe in itchy go, itchy a. Give yourself to the moment. This is the first time you and I have ever met in 3 3 13. I've seen you before, but I never saw you 3 3 3 13. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you live life like that, every day, Doc, when you go play, when you go play golf, you got to make believe when you grab that golf uh, club. Okay, Ron, I know you're a golfer too. You need to get together with the pot. And I'm telling you, you grab that golf club and you got to make believe like it's the first time you ever grab that golf club. That's not bad. It's your new beginning with experience. Are you listening to me? Oh, Jesus. Come on, Ron, listen to me. Every time I get in the... Okay, I'm going to say what I do on the air. Every time I get in front of my master, my teacher, he says, this is the first time you're doing this. But you have experience on it. See, that's how you keep it alive. Same old, same old ain't working anymore. It drags and it's boring. Every time I do something, that I've done before, I make believe it's the first time. I make believe it's the first time. Oh, I wish you had an ear to hear. You want to be in love with your wife? Make believe it's the first time you ever met her. I said, can I preach it like I feel it? Praise God. And that fire will never leave your heart. You got to have a passion. That's why you got to have, once again, you got to have the right attitude. You have to understand there's a purpose, and you need to be humble. You need to keep your strength under control. Praise the Lord. Okay? So your, your, your mind has two parts. It has a memory, and it has an imagination. We agree that your memory replays the past. You got that down? And your imagination replays the future. And God, when he speaks to you, he speaks to you through pictures. Now, let me show you that God is doing a new thing. I want you to go to Isaiah 43, 19. Isaiah 43, 19, and watch what he says. Will you give me 10 more minutes, please, because of time? Can I have 10 more minutes, please? Isaiah 43, 19. God's doing a new thing. God is a God of new beginnings. I remember my father, my natural father, Orlando Marilla, before going on with the Lord, he, and even before, go, even that day, he told me, son, remember this. You're born again every day. Every day you're born again. I wish I had somebody to hear what I'm saying. Every day. Aren't you tired of yourself? Aren't you? Sometimes I'm tired of myself. I ain't got nothing to do. We don't go nowhere. Well, stop thinking like that and start thinking like this. Every day is a new day. Every day you're born again. Every day. You have to be excited about your days. You have to have a passion for living. Write that word down. Passion for living. Passion for living. Passion for living. If you got no passion, it's hard to be around you. 
It's hard to be around people. That, nah, nah, nah. Look, man, I can get that anywhere else. Leave me alone. Go put this rope around your neck on your own. Carry your own rock. The guy's like, will you carry this rock? I'm about to jump off the bridge. Carry your own rock and jump off the bridge on yourself. I don't want no part of that. Don't call my name. My name is less and I'm not in your mess. Praise the Lord. You have to remember that. Remember this, what I'm teaching you today through the unction of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 43, 19. You're there? Praise the Lord. It says this. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. He says, now it springs forth. He says, now, because all the puzzle are in the right place. All the pieces of the puzzle are in the right place. Now this is going to go forward. I ain't getting no help in here. Oh, you like your misery, don't you? It's refundable at the door, I promise you. Try being blessed. Try being in, in a place of happiness. Try being happy. When you're happy with yourself, you're happy with God. Try it. In Jesus' name. Yes. It's springing forth. Do you not perceive and know it? Can't you see it? That's what he's saying. Can't you see that I'm doing a new thing? Can't you see that I'm doing a new thing? You think every day is same old, same old. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The devil is a liar and Jesus is the Messiah. I'm about to do something new with you and it's happening right now. Oh, Jesus. See it and know it. That's what he says. See it and know it. And will you not give heed to it? Write this down. See it, know it, and pay attention to it. The reason the thing, the reason why the matter is dying on you is because you don't pay attention to it. You see it like an old object. You see it like an old thing. Instead of giving thanks for the shoes that you have, you see them like an old pair of shoes. Wow. I said, see it, know it, and pay attention to it. It's like a husband with a wife. The husband has to see his wife and know that is his wife and pay attention to the wife. Otherwise, otherwise, that wife will wither. She'll be living. She'll be, a, she'll be a living, but she won't be existing. I'm talking to you, praise the Lord. If you don't take care of your store, somebody else is going to take care of your store. That's the same we say up north. If you don't, <laughs> you don't take care of the candy in the candy store, ooh, Lord Jesus, somebody else will. Come on now. <laughs> this is the truth. You know you know that I know that you know. Praise God. You have to understand. You have to see it, know it, and, and pay attention to it. And then he goes on prophesying to us because Isaiah was a major prophet. Praise the Lord. You have minor prophet and you have major prophet. You'll learn that further in, in this ministry. The power of a prophet. And he said this. He says, I will even make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. He says, I will, I will, I will water your dry land. I will water your dry land. I will water your dry land. Everybody looking up. The reason why there ain't no harvest is because your land is dry. I water my land every day. I tell, I tell the wife, you look good and beautiful today. I chase her around the house. And she, oh, your mom is next door. Your daughter's next door. Well, I'm doing okay. If I... <laughs> I'm not doing anything illegal. If I'm chasing the neighbor's wife and then I'm in, I'm in big trouble. I'm chasing my own wife God gave me. Let me chase what God gave me. Say that with me. I'm going to chase what God gave me. In fact, I'm going to become a God chaser. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I dare you to become a God chaser. He says, 
in your dry situation, in your empty bank account, I'm about to put something in it. Praise the Lord. He says, for I'm about to do, this is what he says in New Living Translation, for I'm about to do something new. Write it down. He's about to do something new. Every day when you wake up, Adam, you need to say, God's going to do something new today. You want to have a prosperous life, prophet? You need to say that every day. God's about to do something new. God's about to do something new. And then he says in New Living Translation, for I'm about to do something new. And then he goes on and says, see, he talks about seeing, see, see, I have already begun. And then he goes on saying, do you not see it? There you go. You heard what she said, right? If you can see it, you can have it. If you don't see it, you'll never have it. Some of us have sight, but we're blind. Because our attitude has us captive. We're in a prison. And we don't even know how to get out. And today the Lord is trying to help you get out. And then he goes on saying, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. Whatever is dry, I'll get you out of this place. He said, I'll, I, I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Some of us have dry wasteland in our life. There's an area in our life that might be dry and waste. It's just dried out. Praise the Lord. God's about to rain on that place. But he's waiting for you to, for you to tell him, Father, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Water my crop. Praise God. Water my seed. I'm tired of this dryness. Always remember, your mind must have a focus. Write it down. Always remember, your mind must have a focus. If you don't have, you're focused anyway. Some of you are focused on the wrong thing. Instead of being focused, focus on the wrong thing, start getting focused on the right thing. Stop it already. Get out of there. You, you have the key to your life. You have the key to the lock. You have the key to the lock. You have the key to the lock. Nobody can open the lock but you. You're complaining about what you're tolerating. And then you say, well, I have no other choice. This is the way it's got to be for now. Then if it has to be like this for now, at least enjoy the ride. Know where you at. Because you're about to enter something new. Praise the Lord. You'll never get to that new place until you understand why you're going through what you're going through. And why you're there. It's a process. It's a teaching from your Father in heaven. He loves you so much. Now watch this. Father God has given you three new things. He's given you a new heart. He's given you a new life. And now he's giving you a new mind. Write it down. If you focus on these three things, a new heart, a new life, and a new mind. New heart, new life, new mind. I know you receive it. It's the word of God, honey. God loves you so much that he's telling you again, telling you again, telling you again, telling you again. He said, it ain't over. It's just starting. It's not over. It's just starting. It's not over. It's just starting. New heart, new life, and now he's giving you a new mind. And he's saying to me, he's saying to me to tell you, tell them to purge it. Purge it with my word. Speak my word. My word is positive. It's not negative. My word produces. It doesn't subtract. My word multiplies. It restores. My word is a word of restoration. Renovation. Come on now. Restoration, say it with me. Restoration, renovation. And now you get recovery. I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying. Okay. You know, you could do a lot more thing than come into the house of the Lord and get your spirit fed. But I guarantee you, when that thing is over, unless you have a focus, it's going to be the same old, same old. You got me going in circles. 
Round and round and round. Please be tired of your circle life. In Jesus' name. So go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17, please. He's giving you a new heart, a new life. Now put on a new mind. You getting it? A new heart. You have a, say this with me. I have a new heart. Say, I have a new life. Now I have a new mind. New heart, new mind, new life. Say it any way you want. As long as you say the three things that God's given us to give to you. New heart, new life, new mind. <clears throat> new heart, new life, new mind. New heart, new life, new mind. George, things are going to happen to you. You don't, you don't even understand what's about to happen to you. People are, are, are asking me about you that you don't even know they're asking me about you. Praise, son. Praise the Lord, son. God wants to utilize you. This is the year. This is it, man. Just line up. I told Ron and Patty, I said, Ron and Patty is about to do something extraordinary. Don't listen to this. Don't listen to your comfort zone. Don't listen to those that are around you. They don't even know where they're going, but you do. You're doing something. See, when, when you want to get to somewhere that you have never been, you have to do something that you have never done before. You've never done this before. So God is about to expand you, explode you, and everybody's going to say, it must have been God. Because I remember them. Remember, I remember them. Because they're not going to be in that place no more. Gone and gone and gone, living the good life. I didn't say living the life of a vida loca. I said living the good life. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Second Corinthians five seventeen. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, there goes the anointing. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold. All things become new. Are you there? Are you reading that thing? Why do you keep thinking you're in the same old, same old? That's a lie. Why? Because you don't see change enough? You don't see change quick enough? You don't see change quick enough. So you, you speak doubt. If I don't see it, I can't believe it. That's the, that's the point. You have to see it in the spirit before you can have it in the natural. You have to see it in the spirit, praise the Lord, before you can have it in the natural. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in the New Living Translation reads like this, praise God. He says this, he says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, and the, the old life is gone, a new life has begun. Now, let me see something. God's been around a lot longer than you have, so you lie and God's telling the truth. Your attitude and your feeling is lying to you, and God's telling you the truth. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm all right. I'm good. But check it out anyway. Praise the Lord. That's the way to do it. Okay? You know what this means? This is what this means. It means there has been a funeral, write it down, there has been a funeral for everything used and old in my life. That's why it's not there no more. Whew, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's been a funeral. There's been a funeral. There's been a funeral in my life. All the used and old things are not there no more. Use and old things are not there no more. Use and old things are not there no more. Use and old things are not there no more. If you start living a life like this, with this type of attitude, the use and the old is not here no more, you're going to see what's going to happen. <clears throat> praise the Lord. You're going to see what's happening. God says right now, praise the Lord, listen to me. I am the Father God. I am the Creator. Write it down. Father God, the creator. I'm going to make you right until your finger hurts. That's right. Praise the Lord. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's only once a week. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Or twice a week. Praise God. He said, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm, I don't know. I don't know about you. I remember. Okay. My wife is here. Jody, you here. You remember. Remember when I used to sit under my old pastor, my Genesis? I used to be in the edge of the chair. 
and I was taking notes like crazy. I didn't know, I didn't know a lick what I know now, but I just knew that these keys were golden. I still have them books. I still got those. I can teach out of those books when the Lord tells me to. I got, I got journal. I got journal since 1992. When I used to get up at 6.30 in the morning in a place called Christ is a Solution, and we used to sing and give devotion to the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Will he get the energy? Well, spend time with the Lord and you'll get the energy. This is the day. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh no, what, I, what am I doing? I want to sing, I want to shout, I want to sing, I want to shout. Praise the Lord. <laughs> My life suck. <laughs> oh, 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 I'll get this, look. I don't need this, I know this. Then where is the prosperity in your life? Let me see. Let me see what, you, what you're producing for God. He says he's going to make a way in your dry wasteland. Receive that word in your heart. Next year, <laughs> oh boy, I'm going to say it, Lord. Heck, three months from now, you're not going to be in the same place. All things are become new. Every day you get up, oh, I can fight, believe me. I fight, man, I'm telling you. I should have been born Irish, right there, fight. Praise the Lord, come on, somebody, laugh. <laughs> you understand, don't, don't, do, don't shoot me down like that. <laughs> well, me lad, let's go on it. <laughs> My God, there's a funeral in your house. All the yous and the old things are gone. Now, for you to see your future, you're going to need a picture of your future. You're going to need a picture of your future. You're going to need a picture of your future. I want you to close your eyes and see a picture of your future. And if you can't see nothing, say, God, show me how to see a picture of my future. Show me the picture of my future. Without a picture of your future, you'll never get to your future. Some of you, when I'm on behind the pulpit, I feel like I'm a surgeon. And I'm trying to give you this... And I'm trying to knock you out so God can uproot what's inside of you. And you keep saying, no, don't give me that gas. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. I can take a roar. No, you can because you're not focused. And I'm not putting anybody down. If you will focus, you will be producing. Praise the Lord. And I'm not saying that you're a bad person, that you're no good. Come on, I'm not standing in the corner and doing a cappella on you. You're no good. You're no good. You're no good. Baby, you're no good. That's what you've been hearing all your life. And you've been believing that. I'm a different type of preacher. I'll come where, right where you at. And somebody's looking at me in that video right now and saying, he's crazy, but I like him. Praise God. He's talking to me the truth. The Spirit of God is using me right now to get to you. He says, stop running. Surrender to him in Jesus' name. Praise God. You got to stop this. Without a picture, you'll never know where you're supposed to belong. You'll never know where you're supposed to be without a picture. He says in, his, in the Bible, he says, he says, without a vision, my people perish. My God. My God. So get a picture. Get a picture. Well, I don't know how to do that. Get a magazine. Get, get the house that you want to live in and put it up in your dream wall. If you come in my training room, I have a dream wall. I have a dream wall. I have an accomplishment wall, achieve wall, and I have a wall that I pay attention to those that have taught me, to, taught me what I have. Praise the Lord. Those that have been before me. Okay? I'm not worshiping idols. I worship the invisible God, the one you can't see. Praise God. His name is the Father. His name is Jehovah God. Elohim, Adonai. Okay? Jehovah Jireh. Nisi, praise God. Jehovah Shalom, that's the Father. And then I'm connected to the Son. Cristo, Cristo Dio, that's Italian for Christ Jesus. Jesu Cristo, Joshua, Joshua, Messiah, Mashiach, the Master. Hallelujah. 
He's the master minister. He's the master. He will always be the master. Praise God. He's the true Shehan. Praise God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Go to Genesis 15, verse 5, and perhaps we might close there. Perhaps. Perhaps. I'm going to see your attitude right now. <laughs> That's what the Lord says. This is, your, this is it, he said. This is it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You can't say you didn't get fed. You can't say you come in here. You can't say, you can't, oh, I came in, I don't know what he said. I don't know, it was, what he said, oh, I don't know, it was nice. He made me feel good. When you, get, when you leave this place, you leave with a different attitude. Praise the Lord, somebody. It should be dedicated to the Lord. You should dedicate a day to the Lord. Every other day is yours. Why can't you dedicate a day to the Lord? But instead, we're stealing from the Lord. We're trying to tip the Lord. I, I see you, maybe. Maybe I see you. See? Some of you, you know why I'm talking to you like this. Because the only time you spend time in the Lord is when you're in, in this presence. Well, I pray at home. I, I do this. Well, why, why, why I'm not seeing no change? If you're really spending time with the Lord, you'll say, my God, I tell you. Oh, I like being next to her. I like being next to him. His spirit is kicking the tar out of the devil. Praise the Lord. Are you receiving me? We've got to do a change. He said, new creation. All things are become new. All things are become new. All things are become new. They don't stay the same. They don't go back to the past. They don't, come on now, they don't replay the past. They walk in a new, newness, new today, imagination. Okay, you there? Good. Genesis 15, 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven. See again? Can you see it? He says, look now towards heaven. I hear you, Lord. You know what he's saying? The words that you're receiving right now, this is what he's saying. I'm telling you he's saying it. The words you're receiving right now is going to give you longevity. The words that I'm giving to you is medicine. And I have you medicating in it right now. You're meditating and medicating in it. And it's going to give you longevity. Don't you tell me you're leaving this earth. You ain't leaving nowhere. Don't let the devil say that you're leaving this earth. Because you ain't going nowhere. I got an assignment for you. And you got to carry it out for me. And you won't leave until you change your attitude, understand your purpose, and, and get in a place of humbleness. In my presence. He says, if you humble yourself in my mighty hand, I will exalt you in due season. Praise the Lord. I want to use you, he says. I want to use you. He said it. I want to use you. Let me use you. Whew. Let me use you. Come on now. Here he goes. And he brought him forth aboard and said, look now towards heaven. You know why he said, look now towards heaven? Write this down. John 3, 27. Dr. Barry, every good thing come from heaven. Mother Dottie is a gift from heaven to you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. You understand what I'm saying to you? He said, look up to heaven. Because every good thing comes from heaven. John 3, 27. Look up to heaven. You hear me, Ron? Look up to heaven. And thank God for your John 3, 27. She's sitting right next to you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for my John 3, 27. Somebody say that with me. Thank God for my John 3, 27. That scripture right now is going inside of you and you're getting pregnant with it. Praise the Lord. So you're going to have to go through the process. It might be nine months from now. Praise the Lord. Because you can't give birth sooner. Because if you give birth sooner, he might be a freak. Come on, let me do it. And, he, and, he, and then he said, and tell the stars. See, talk to your situation. If thou be able to number them, and he said, unto him, so shall thy seed be. This is what I keep hearing. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into your heart the things that God has in store for you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank all the viewers out there. Praise the Lord. Listen, 
If you got fed today, well then praise the Lord. And if you don't know Jesus as Lord, just say the simple prayer with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. <laughs> I let you to I let you to I let you sweep away all the old things out of my life and come into my house and dress me up new. Give me a new wall, give me some new furniture, rearrange the way I think. If you pray this prayer with me, then praise the Lord and thank you. You know my email. You know how to get in touch with me. Do it. And I'll get in touch with you. God bless you and I'll see you real soon. Amen.